Okay, so hi, I'm Robbie Robertson, CEO and co-founder of Sedera Technologies. And in this presentation, first I'll discuss the advantages of digital engineering for CubeSat projects. And then I'll give a brief demonstration of CubeSat digital engineering using Sedera Satellite and Open MBEE. Uh, so what is digital engineering? And haven't we already been using engineering software tools for decades now? Uh, so digital engineering is actually something newer and it's the next big step in improving engineering workflows by connecting tools and models to one another. The products of discrete tasks currently, you know, performed by different engineers and in different tools across a project are communicated manually using document based communication. A transition to model based communication and the use of centralized and shared repositories of controlled engineering data is essential to realizing significant improvements over our current workflows in engineering efficiency. This is known as model-based engineering, digital engineering, digital transformation, model-based systems engineering, and other phrases, each of which are associated with different organizations and different disciplines. Uh, so in summary, digital engineering is the next step. It reduces this document-based communication and streamlines our information exchange. Before moving on, I also wanna introduce two key concepts in digital engineering that will come up later in the talk. First, we have the digital twin. So the digital twin is a set of engineering models that can be developed and then carried throughout the project lifecycle. So our Sidera satellite platform is a tool for creating these digital twins for satellite missions. And then the digital thread is a closely related concept. The digital thread in practice uh, refers to a single source of truth repository of engineering data that we can maintain and carry throughout the entire project lifecycle with connections to all the traditionally, traditionally siloed uh, groups, individuals, and different software tools that are feeding into this uh, project. So why apply digital engineering tools and workflows to CubeSat projects? So CubeSats provide opportunities to try out uh, innovative concepts. Uh, there are opportunities for innovation, not just in the technology that will fly and the hardware that we've you know, seen so much innovation in, but also in the engineering tools and the workflows that are used to develop that technology. So that's where we're focusing with digital engineering and, and that's why CubeSats create this, this great opportunity for innovation in, in digital engineering. CubeSats also have tight budgets and schedules. And so these require efficiency, which digital engineering tools and workflows can provide. Uh, we want to allow engineers to spend more time on technical work and less time on manual communication tasks like creating reports, uh, emailing and creating slide packages. And finally, the CubeSat standard could allow for reuse of similarly standardized digital engineering tools and workflows. So we've seen that with the hardware, uh, commoditization and reuse of that flight hardware. And we can also do that with our processes and, and the structure around those processes because it's expensive and, and costs budget, budget and schedule to set up the IT and systems and processes to support digital engineering workflows. Uh, but once we have it set up, we have this opportunity to be much more efficient. Uh, so now I'll get into the specific tools we'll be using in today's demo of digital engineering applied to a CubeSat mission. I'll be using our satellite engineering platform, which is called Sidera Satellite and the mission designer module in Sidera Satellite, along with the open MBEE open source system for collaborative engineering. I should note that while Sidera Satellite is a cloud-based platform, the version I'm showing you today is a, is a dated version in a development environment instance that's running locally on, on my computer. Uh, this development instance includes open MBEE integration features that we developed last year with NASA JPL support. As I said, open MBEE, which stands for open model based engineering environment is an open source collaborative engineering system. It enables engineers to work in different tools and different languages and easily share and document their work across all of these tools. Uh, the system includes three primary components that you'll see today. So the model development kits are tool specific integrations and their primary purpose is to connect that tool, that third party tool into the OpenMBE system. So that's what we've 
prototyped for our uh, platform, Sidera Satellite, and that's what establishes the connection between Sidera Satellite and Open MBEE. Uh, and then we have the model management system, which is what those third party tools actually connect into. So that's our shared repository for kind of storing and maintaining that digital thread throughout the project lifecycle. And then we have View Editor. So View Editor is a web-based tool for creating shared documentation. And that documentation can reference and be linked to information from all the tools that are plugged into MMS via the MDKs. Sidera Satellite is a digital engineering platform, a cloud-based digital engineering platform. And our goal with Sidera Satellite is to address all of the disparate elements of satellite engineering in a single modular tool that's structured to automate the exchange of engineering data between the modules for rapid and concurrent engineering. As I said, Sidera Satellite is cloud-based and it will be accessible using any web browser at satellite.sidero.com. Uh, we developed it from the ground up to leverage all of the power, collaborative potential, and flexibility of cloud computing and web applications. The platform and the mission designer module that I'll show you are in testing now and be released in the next few months. And this module addresses orbit pointing and conops design. The next five modules will be energy balance, attitude control, link and data, thermal and propulsion. And those will really round out our core capability. And then we'll move through our current roadmap and continue indefinitely to add uh, scope and, and capability to the platform. So now we'll get into the demo. Uh, we'll be talking about the preliminary design of a 3U CubeSat mission called Firefly. Uh, quickly showing you a few of the tools we have plugged into our model-based engineering system and demonstrating the connections between these tools. We have three users involved here uh, and we're not gonna kind of play those users or go through each of their roles in detail in the interest of time, uh, but we'll outline their work and, and how all of the information from their respective tools are uh, plugged into the system and, and connected together. So we have users, user one, the systems architect, they work in Cameo Systems Modeler, which is a tool for developing SysML models. And they'll build a SysML model of our satellite mission, incorporate blocks from the SSB package, the package of Sidero satellite blocks that establish a connection to our platform. Uh, and those, those blocks, as I said, will expose information and basically serve as a patch panel between the SysML model and the Sidera Satellite model. And then we have the mission design engineer who works in Sidera Satellite and builds uh, a model of the mission and the spacecraft, simulates it and uses those results to refine the mission design. And then finally, we have the documentation lead. So they're working in that view editor tool from OpenMBEE to create documentation that incorporates design information and simulation results from Sidera Satellite. So now we'll move over into those other tools. Okay, so we're starting off in view editor here. We can see an introduction to the Firefly mission. And then uh, in section one, we have the system model. So this is the work of that systems architect. These are diagrams exported from their CSM model and, uh, and integrated into this document. And you can see the Sidera satellite blocks at the bottom here that connect information in the SysML model to the Sidera satellite platform. And then we have sections for all of the design elements uh, addressed in mission designer. So orbit and time, targets, pointing, and concept of operations. And throughout the document, we have tables of design parameters, which are connected between all of the tools. And when we make a change here, it's reflected in Sidero Satellite and in the SysML model and, and can be used to drive simulation. We also have simulation results. So these plots that you'll see throughout the document are all created in Sidero Satellite and pushed uh, when they're ready to the MMS repository where they're version controlled and automatically updated in this document. So we have information on our targets, our ground station, our crosslink satellite. Those are pointing information and plots of uh, attitude quaternion time series. And then uh, in this final section is on our conops. So our concept of, op a concept of operations. Here we capture the logic behind simulation of changes in the operational mode of the satellite. And uh, that drives changes in the pointing mode of the satellite. And, uh, and all of the logic is captured here and reflected in the Sidera satellite model. 
And we have simulation results as well, time series of our CONOPS logic and the active operational mode of the satellite and statistics on the fraction of the mission simulation spent in each operational mode. We have requirements in the document, which indicate the fraction of the mission that we wanna spend in each operational mode, science, communications, and uh, idle sunlight where we're generating maximum uh, solar ray power. Uh, so these, meeting these requirements will ensure we're generating enough science data, uh, we are able to downlink that data, and we have sufficient energy balance margin. So currently we are failing those requirements. We're not spending enough time in science or in our communications modes. So as the documentation lead here in the role of the documentation lead, I can go up and change a design parameter. So I will edit that here. I'll change to an alternate option for our orbit, an alternate launch opportunity, which is uh, 200 kilometers lower in altitude. It's a 600 kilometer inclined circular orbit. We started off with our baseline orbit, which was a polar circular orbit at 800 kilometers. So we can change that information. And once we've saved it in those, in those boxes in, in view editor, it's automatically updated in the MMS repository and we can pull those changes into Sidera Satellite. So we'll switch over to our Sidera Satellite development instance here. And we will, uh, before we pull the changes in, we'll take a look at the baseline values. We haven't pulled the update from the MMS repository, so it's not reflected here. We can see in our edit board that we're still in the 90 degree inclination, the polar circular orbit. So we will go back. And we will pull the changes from MMS. Okay, so now we can open our mission designer module again. And we can see that the uh, changes to the orbit have been pulled in from MMS. We have the 65 degree inclination and the semi-major axis associated with that 600 kilometer altitude. And we can re-simulate the mission. Okay, so this mission is done simulating. We can go into our analyze boards and uh, verify that uh, the orbit has changed as we expected and, uh, and check out the statistics on the CONOPS to verify our performance. So we can see from the playback here that we are now in that uh, inclined orbit, but not in the uh, polar, the 65 degree inclined orbit and not in the polar orbit where we started. Uh, we're following the expected behavior in the attitude and the changes between CONOPS mode. So when we enter the mid and low latitudes, we expect to go into science mode and point our payload boresight nadir. Okay, and then we can check those statistics. So in our uh, operational mode distribution pie chart, we're now in 48.6% science modes. So we're meeting our 46% requirement. We're spending sufficient time in idle sunlight and in our communications modes. So we've got good results. We wanna share it with the rest of the team. So we can go back to our Mission Explorer interface and commit those changes to MMS. Okay, so we can type in a commit message here. We'll say uh, updated simulation results for new orbit parameters. And once we've committed those changes and refreshed our view editor window, 
we should see those updated results that meet our requirements. Okay, so we're meeting our requirements and, uh, and we've demonstrated this ability to quickly share information and iterate on a design using these digital engineering workflows. Right, so that concludes my talk. Thank you for attending and please reach out to me using the contact information here or join our upcoming live Q&A session. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks again, bye.